Welcome back, everybody, to YouTube's premier storyboarding channel, Ink and Grow Rings. My name is Vinny Glay, and today I'll be showing you the tips and techniques that I use to turn this script, these location photos, to this gorgeous set of commercial storyboards. Let's get started. The job in question was a lighthearted comedic spot for the Phillips 66 gas station, which I drew way back in 2019. This funny little yarn is about a dad who's recently suffered a minor leg injury and is forced to rely on his teenage son to drive him around. As usual, before beginning the sketches, I jumped on the phone with the director and we went through a shot list together. I'll be referring to that shot list throughout this video, beginning with a wide establishing shot of the car parked outside the hospital while the kid holds the door open for the dad. First thing I'm going to do is drop in the location photo that was provided for me, along with a reference photo of a 2000 Jeep Cherokee that I took the liberty of downloading in advance. Now, the perspective in the Jeep photo I found isn't exactly correct, so I'll begin by tracing the front end of the Jeep as it appears here, but when I get to the sides, I'll freehand it a bit in order to force the car into the proper perspective. That is supposed to be walking on one of those little scooter-looking things that hospitals dish out, you know, like when you injure a leg. I made my life a little bit easier by finding this photo online, dropping it into place, and then tracing it. Great, now let's go ahead and move the dad over a bit so you can see that the kid is holding the door open for him. Then I'm going to use Corel Painter's one-point perspective tool to make drawing the rest of this shot a breeze. If you're using Photoshop or any program that isn't Painter, you can figure out what the vanishing point is by simply grabbing a physical ruler and using it to follow any two of the architectural lines of this building until they meet. Congratulations, you just found the vanishing point. Now simply pivot your ruler on that vanishing point to draw all of the horizontal lines on this side of the building. Now just repeat the process on the other side and you are good to go. For these next couple of shots, I went ahead and took some interior photos of my wife's SUV. Now, because this isn't a commercial for a specific car company, like say uh, Nissan or Ford, I can keep the interiors relatively generic. After dropping my photo into place, I went ahead and very loosely scribbled in both the dad and the kid. Keep in mind, this is still the initial sketch phase. The idea here is not necessarily to create a pretty picture, but to communicate to the director what I intend to draw later. This is gonna save everybody a lot of time in the long run. Next, we're gonna have a reverse from the dad's point of view of the kid coming around the front to the driver's side. Utilizing another one of those photos I just took, I'm first gonna sketch the kid coming around to the front of the car, and then I'm just going to trace the car's interior. Finally, I'm gonna hide both reference photos and loosely indicate some backgrounds for both shots. The next shot that the director is looking for is a frontal hood-mounted shot looking back through the windshield. This is one of those shots that I've drawn dozens of times in just as many commercials. So rather than have to reinvent the wheel, I'm going to open up my driving asset page. Those of you who are familiar with this channel, you'll know that I keep asset sheets for pretty much all things that I find myself drawing over and over again in every commercial. I've got sheets on things like holding cell phones, city streets, extras, dogs, laptops and tablets, anything which I'm repeatedly called upon to draw. Being able to copy and paste some of these elements into place and then alter them slightly as needed shaves off a little bit of time here and a little bit of time there. But compounded over an entire job, this can easily end up saving me an hour or two. When you're up against a tight deadline, an hour or two it could be the difference between delivering on time or not. I've recently decided to put my personal asset collection up for sale and I'm currently working on organizing and packaging everything. Consequences is consequences as long as I'm rich. Going back to my driving asset sheet, I'm going to grab this hood-mounted shot here, paste it into place, and then erase the roof. The Jeep has a, a boxier, squared off shape, so I'll just freehand that into place and then sketch in our comedic duo. The director had asked that the dad be reluctantly dropping the key into the kid's eager little hand, so I'll indicate that in the sketch as well. For this next shot, the director had sent me this screen grab, which is from one of his earlier commercials. He wants me to duplicate it, but in place of this little girl, I'll draw the dad looking a bit defeated as he stares out the window. The kid, on the other hand, is having a hell of a time. He's really enjoying this reversal of roles, so let's go ahead and put a bit of a smirk on his face. Okay, now we're gonna cut forward in time a bit. The dad's waiting outside his office for his ride home, and his cheeky little brat is running late again. So the shot is gonna be from inside the car, looking over the kid to the dad, who's beginning to lose his cool. So we'll drop this pretty awesome location photo into place, but then instead of using one of the photos I took earlier, 
I'm going to just grab another shot from my driving asset sheet, drop it into place, and then cut out the guy behind the wheel. With that done, I'll resize the location photo and use my one point perspective tool yet again to effortlessly draw in the building. I know I've said it already, but this really is a fantastic location. I really love the way all these architectural lines draw your attention into the top of the stairs where the dad will be positioned. I mean, even the shadows on the ground are leading right up to the actor. Finally, I'm gonna use my marker brush to thicken all of the lines on this foreground piece of action because I really want the kid to sort of pop off from the background. Shot seven is gonna be a simple cut in for a medium close up, the dad looking at his watch, you know, implying that the kid is late. My initial thought here was just to go ahead and start freehanding this. I mean, it's a simple enough image, right? But then I stopped and realized that finding a photo online and tracing that instead would make my life just a teeny bit easier. And I am all about making my life easier. Over the shoulder shot, looking at the kid, was leaning out the window with a, hey, what do you want from me, look. The director was kind enough to take a photo of the exact shot that he wants while text counting, so all I've gotta do is trace this photo and swap the existing car out for a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. Moving right along to shot number nine, we've got yet another screen grab that the director sent. So we'll drop that in and replace the talent with our current cast. Moving right along to shot number nine, we've got yet another screen grab at the director's seat. So we'll drop that in and replace the talent with our current cast. Running forward in time again, we're now gonna find the dad waiting impatiently in the parked car while the kid is picking up his dry cleaner. So this shot is gonna be a shot of the dad looking into the rear view mirror. Because again, he's sitting in the passenger seat. And then on the left side, you're gonna see the kid is just shooting the breeze with some woman outside the store, completely oblivious to his irritated dad. The following shot will be from the front passenger side, looking back at the son, who continues to waste time talking to some woman. Once again, we will drop in a Jeep reference along with an actual location photo and trace away. I'll freehand the dad and let's put a piece of a mirror in here to tie it together with the previous shot and then sketch in the kid and the woman. Okay, so we've got two location photos that the director would like us to copy here. The first one is going to be looking across the dad at the kid who is standing outside the passenger window. The kid has no money, so dad is handing him his credit card. Then the second one is going to be shot from directly overhead, but I'm going to turn the kid around so that he's facing the gas tank more. For this next shot, we're gonna add a moment where the kid is wiping the window and dad's teasing him with that old, hey, you missed a spot gag that all stupid people do for some reason. And just to add a bit of branding, we'll have the Phillips 66 sign reflected in the windshield. For shot 16, we're going to trace yet another screen grab which was provided by the director and replace the existing talent with our cast. Right about now, you're likely saying to yourself, wait a minute, can commercial storyboarding really be this easy? I mean, half of the job is just this idiot tracing over photos that the director sent him. First of all, that's Mr. Idiot to you. Secondly, you're not wrong, but I'm gonna get into a little more detail on that later. For shot 17, we've got a two shot taken from the back seat. The kid is supposed to be fiddling with the radio station here, so we'll go ahead and indicate that as well. Okay, now we've entered the final act of our little story as the kid pulls into the driveway and drops his dad off. Dad's gonna get out of the car, walk around to the front, and then wave goodbye as his son backs out. After spending a few weeks driving around with him, Dad now trusts the kid to take the car out by himself. The director wants to open this scene with the camera booming down as the car enters the driveway underneath it. So we're going to convey that shot with two frames. For frame A, we'll drop in the location photo, but position it higher up and mostly out of frame. That's because the camera is going to start about 10 feet above ground. 
So we can still trace the front of the house, but the driveway will extend it down and under us. Adding some directional arrows will help sell the idea. For the B-frame, we can position the photo right in the center as the camera has now dropped down to eye level. Make sense? Opening up my driving stock sheet yet again, I'm going to grab this interior illustration and drop it into a place for our next shot, which is just a kid sitting in the driver's seat watching the old man come around to the front of the car. Shot 20 is a medium wide shot of the dad standing by the driver's side window as the kid begins to back out. I neglected to add the directional arrows to those last three frames, which is kind of important. So I'm gonna drop back now and toss those in real quick before moving on to shot 21, which is a hood mounted shot of the sun waving to his dad, who we can see reflected in the windshield. Finally, a wide shot of the car backing out into the sunset. I wanted to share with you an insight that I recently had. A few months back, I was driving home and I happened to pass one of those little Mexican roadside memorials. If you live in California, you've seen these all over the place. They usually involve a cross with the victim's name on it, along with flowers, animals, and personal items. The memorial marks a place where the person died. I drove past and I kind of said to myself, oof, man, that sucks. A little while later, I pulled into a gas station, and as I was standing at the counter, I looked up and I saw one of those millionaire made here signs that the lottery likes to put. I laughed as I suddenly realized that the roadside memorial and the lottery signs are both silently sending the exact same message. There's no reason in the world that you couldn't be next. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, more than half of this gig was just me tracing photos. I wish I could tell you that this job was the exception to the rule, but no. I'd say about 70% of all my gigs comes down to me just tracing the director's photos, you know, then just jazzing up. I made $230,000 this year doing exactly this. That's almost a quarter of a million dollars. You know what? There's no reason in the world that you couldn't be next.